I'm Dan Fogel. I'm going to talk to you today about developing a complex image uh, from a full-size line art here. So I have this line art that I've already laid out uh, and I used a projector to do that and uh, primarily I'm concentrating on shape and edge uh, but also starting to mass in some some of the darker planes with kind of an open or a broken hat stroke. One of the first things I like to do after I trace some line art is take a paper towel <clears throat> or something like that and just kind of gently glaze in some of the line art. So I'm just going to kind of wipe that line art into the paper just a little bit. This is doing is it's kind of pushing that line art down into the page. and uh, making it more stable. Kind of makes the line art a little more solid. So I'm kind of smearing it a little bit, but that's okay. I'm going to need some glaze and some other tones around the image anyway. So I'm just going to glaze that in right away. Get a little glaze going on that line art. And then I want to uh, start to develop my planes. Uh, on an image like this, I want to develop the background first and then uh, save the main subject for uh, later on in the drawing. So my agenda here is to work on the sky and uh, the landscape a little bit here. So I just want to take a 6B charcoal and start to mass in uh, some value for the space tone. I'm going to leave about a half inch margin up at the top. I don't want to go too dark. I want that sky to be about 50% um, or maybe even a little lighter. <clears throat> Ultimately, I need to find a color back there that's going to be lighter than a lot of the dark values on our main subject. So, and the other thing that I'm doing with the sky is creating a gradient. So I want the sky to be lower, uh, lighter down lower in the picture and getting progressively a little darker as it moves up uh, towards us in space. The, the distance down there near the horizon tends to look lighter and it's good for us uh, because we can emulate the tones of nature by making the trees and the houses um, darker than uh, the, the light section of the sky down here. So uh, you have to decide on your gradient but I'm going to mass in just a little bit more down here below the object as well. And I'll maybe stop short of getting too dark right up next to the edge of the trees. I want there to be contrast against this main subject down here and I can start to mass in those trees in just a second. just want to finish building up the tones in, this, in the sky and the space here. creating a gradient value so I have to sort of distribute my pressure, speed, uh, weight, density of the material that I'm putting down uh, just by changing some of the variables about how I'm controlling the stick. So more pressure or slower uh, just 
you got to get that space tone blocked in. And then again, what I'm doing is I'm sort of leaving off or letting a little bit of um, white still be present down here um, on that far distant edge of uh, the, the picture. Some of the tones in the sky overlap. Some of the trees and the pineapple. You know, those values are going to need to bleed together in, in some sense. It's, it's grays next to grays. So this kind of helps to unify some of the space, which is just you have to get used to sometimes coloring outside the lines. The skill to, let to, to kind of learn you know, when to, when to soften an edge or when to sort of color around the outside. Okay, I'm going to leave that be for just a, a while. It looks okay for the uh, time being. I've got about a half inch margin uh, and I'm just going to do that by hand. So leave kind of a a softer edge at, at the side of the picture. I want to develop the trees in the landscape now and especially focusing on creating contrast here between the trees and the sky. There's a lot of darks here in these trees down low on my reference and then there's very bright blue edge, uh, almost gradating to white, um, depending on the weather conditions and lighting, you could even see it almost pure white down there. So the key is make it darker above uh, and getting progressively lighter as it moves towards the horizon. And every artist has to make that decision about that gradient, how fast it's moving and how saturated it is, uh, just based on the, the picture that they are illustrating. So, I want to dive in and start to mass in some color for these trees. You know, it would be a lot easier in a way if I could actually color them in with color because they're green, etc. But in drawing, we're trying to represent these things as value. Black and white. So, I need to do a couple things. One is mass in these planes. But I may also need to work on my outline um, a little bit more. I just want to move through. Let's mass in these planes and try to take a systematic approach, not worrying too, too much about did, did you get uh, that tree perfect? Okay, just got to block in the values across the page to create the movement and flow to create the silhouette that we need for this drawing. The silhouette is like that strong graphic edge uh, between uh, the background and the foreground. And it's one of those key things that really um, helps your art sort of have a lot of uh, graphic appeal when um, your viewers are looking at it. So, and you know, the other thing that happens is as I add value here, things uh, start to come together, start to actually maybe become a little more uh, visible. So I'm just kind of um, freely doing this in a sense. I'm alternating between uh, massing and hatching, um, just kind of depending on, uh, you know, the, the size and shape and, you know, maybe my level of focus on the object as well. It's not unlike uh, coloring 
with a crayon. In fact, it's a lot like uh, if you had to illustrate something with a crayon, a child's children's crayon. doing essentially is massing in my sides, my side plane values uh, for this foliage. Kind of swiping through, darkening up some of the sides and some of the underplanes and um, trying to get this contrast here between the foliage and the sky. Sometimes I have the point of my charcoal up, other times I like to use the, the back of it um, I like a square chalk occasionally too, not just only a pointed chalk. I'm just kind of um, trying to decide what shape of tool you know would fit best in, in each object. Every artist has to uh, kind of come up with their own strategies as, as they mass in their planes. Okay, I feel like I got a lot done on this foliage, so I want to uh, come back and kind of assess for just a minute, but I think I should probably start to mass in some of the, the planes um, on the houses as well. So I'm just going to swipe at some of the side planes on the architecture now. Not as dark as the trees. So I want to make comparisons here between, you know, what's darker, what's lighter, the house, the tree, the sky. It starts to get a little bit complicated sometimes, but you know, you want to try to stick with it. Those that's the kind of thinking that makes being an artist interesting. This is all just a 6B General's Charcoal. Here again, I, you know, I'm using a, like a smaller texture, not coloring very darkly. Just want to block in some texture for the areas on the ground. It's like massing, but I'm using like a little circular kind of scribble. Scribbling is a thing, you know, so is massing, so is hatching. Just really trying to get the objects to unify and create the contrast that I need uh, to place them in space. of the houses are top planes, so those should be left essentially light. Uh, same with the sidewalk. I wanted to put a little bit of color on what would be the street. Uh, pavement uh, often is dark in value, but it also helps to sort of hold uh, the image together. Have a little bit of a darker here, color here at the edge. So that I'm getting a little bit lighter as I move in. I do want to mass in the side plane of this curb. I could use a ruler on uh, some elements down here, uh, perhaps, in, as I'm developing them. 
but right now I'm just trying to keep it open and keep keep the pace going so I can move along and uh, try to try to keep this drawing a little more enjoyable or fun I think you know that's part of what I liked it is some of the openness and uh, freshness that comes from starting something new and massing in these planes um, and just kind of being open to how how things can evolve I'm just using a 6B to mass in planes on these objects. I uh, previously um, massed in the some of the underplanes and side planes on the wing and the pineapple. And my goal here was to make the, the bottom edge of these objects darker than the sky behind it. And I have a little bit of uh, space here that might even get back to white. This is just an eraser. <clears throat> uh, the same strategy is going to hold true with the character. I want to uh, mass in uh, the most of the planes on this object uh, that are, will be uh, darker than the sky, except for maybe some of the, uh, the planes on the, on the top where we need some light. Start here, the middle of the animal. Kind of developing the ribs and the shoulders, just like I might do with a person if I was drawing that. Massing in some of the underplanes. Okay, um, I've been massing in the planes on uh, the background and the sky and then I moved to the object itself and I tried to pick out some of the key values that I thought would be darker than the background and mass those in. Um, along the way I also usually tip my charcoal stick up and use some of the sharp edges to redraw some of the outlines as I work because I don't want to lose all my outlines either. Uh, when I <clears throat> trace this image and develop the line art, um, I, I kind of wanted to preserve some of that look. And so I, throughout the process, will, will continually work on my outlines as well as long uh, as I'm developing the values too. Uh, this is just a piece of paper towel. I want to take this towel and fold it into kind of a pad, um, something that I could use. Uh, to glaze with. I also have a piece of uh, t-shirt, uh, old cotton t-shirt that I that I could use. Uh, both uh, work well. It's sort of up to you uh, which which whichever one you want to pick. Uh, but I'm going to start to glaze in kind of a... I'm going to use the paper towel first. I'm going to glaze in kind of a horizontal manner. Um, and I think I'm, you know, kind of let some of the background overlap the figure but I don't want to maybe press too hard I want to keep uh, some of the 
the line and the texture intact. So the glaze is just kind of distributing some values um, and thinning out some of the massing that, that I previously did. At some point I wanted to make a uh, glaze this drawing so that I could pull some light out of it. So this is just my gray eraser and I'm going to start down here because this is the area of greatest contrast. I'm also going to swipe around the margins occasionally. I want to take a chamois or a piece of cloth and uh, kind of lift and polish in that area just to sort of smooth it out a little bit. And I'll start to smooth out some of the other values up in the picture with my chamois. going to put the chamois over the main subject right now. I'm mostly just working on developing the space behind it. I'm looking for sort of movement and, and flow and for that edge to start to push back. Um, and after I feel I've achieved that, I can use uh, various erasing tools to start to lift some of the values um, off of uh, the light planes on the ground. This is a chamois. Very similar. The idea is that it's lightening, smoothing out uh, the area, it reduces some of the texture, some of the outlines, helping you get a little more of a blended look, pushing that space back. Uh, this is a pink pearl. I'm going to use this pink pearl, uh, maybe even an index card to create some straight edges. Uh, but I want to start to lift some of the light values on the architecture and on the sidewalk. This index card lets me mask off uh, some straight edges and then I can use uh, my eraser to control uh, some of the other uh, edges in the, sh in the shape that I'm trying to, to pop out. So using this as kind of a masking device to put lighting effects on some of the tops on the architecture and on the sidewalk as well. So this is areas that are facing up. This is my eraser. 
I just hold it underhand and I'm using it to kind of draw with in a sense and there's a lot of small textures in here that I want to try to preserve but I have to get the values right as well. It's kind of complicated. It takes a bit of a feel I guess to understand what, when and how hard to push. But I'm kind of just thinking about what the shapes are and what the textures are that, that I'm looking at. Gravel um, or rocks or trees, bushes. How big would those actual pieces be in real life? Pretty tiny. So I'm not trying to capture everything exactly. I'm more kind of hinting at what's there. I don't want the process to become uh, too painful or take too long. I want to try to record what I see. In a kind of responsive manner. Still just using this pencil eraser to start to lift light from the top edge. And again, what I'm doing is I have a, quite a bit of the eraser extended and I'm using my point of my finger to decide where I want to put the, the eraser. And sometimes I use it across. I just use my finger to brace those different um, actions or moves that I can use here with this just this tool. It's a lot like if, you know having something a little more precise. You need to get contrast there against that sky on the top planes now. And still developing some of the edges underneath as well. So we can kind of use this tool to dig in on smaller shapes. I'm just using this tool to dig in, cut out some of these indents some light on some of the top planes, these feathers, a lot of small parts. I am not necessarily trying to capture every single element perfectly at this point. There's a lot of information here. And I can continue to uh, add kind of elements of light or elements of shadow to some of these shapes that are, that are here. So using a little eraser to kind of cut an outline around the sky. I know I can blend that outline away. It's a hard thing to get it bright enough. Take a chamois or a sponge, something like that, and you can use it to smooth out some of the texture. Or if, you, if the value got too active or too to uh, light, you may need to reapply some value to that area. What I'm looking for is, is it reading, you know, does it, does it look like form and space and depth? Does the picture have movement and flow and balance? Definitely not 
getting overly fixated about realistic details, but rather I'm looking for the pictorial pattern or the balance of values in the picture as a whole. This is a chamois, chamois leather, just using it to push the sky backwards. As I blend something, what's happening is it moves back. And as I redraw, what will happen now is things will come forward. I want to leave some of this energetic edge around the uh, raccoon, around the character. I like it. It's just kind of uh, honest about charcoal and some of the limitations of drawing by hand. So I want to save that, I, that kind of record of the process. And that's your originality. I'm not going to worry too much about is it a perfect rendition, but I'm looking for is it is it a, a an interesting rendition? Uh, does it does it seem well observed, uh, but not overly uh, fussy? I want it to still be kind of fun and uh, like something I want to keep doing. <clears throat> Alright, so I definitely spent some time working on the overlap, the edge between the positive and the background, the foreground and the background, the positive form and the space behind it. it takes a while to get all that stuff to kind of uh, gel together set in place. Um, again, my suggestion here is don't over overthink it too much. Leave some of your mark making active. Um, it, it just honest and it might not look as bad as you think um, when you after you take a picture of it. It might actually you let some of your hand, some of your originality come through. Um, it can actually be a very interesting and uh, beneficial part of your process. So again, I am advocating that you try to move through a drawing like this with some speed and some efficiency. Um, that you try to capture and communicate, um, but not necessarily have to spend um, forever on it. Try to use what you know about charcoal to aid you in this process. The gray eraser, that edge along the horizon as bright as I can. Okay, I want to develop some of the light on the, the form a little bit more and on the character here just a little bit more. back. Some of this is pattern. It's a dark fur and lighter fur. And other uh, aspects of this is texture. There's a, a sort of furry texture of the animal. So I'm just sort of, I have to be kind of flexible in my approach. Looking for ways that I can hold my pencil or my eraser 
uh, to replicate what I need to, to show at this size. Okay, Conti crayon, uh, 2B black. Just going to use it to sort of uh, develop some of the shadows and cores um, in this image. I'm going to use the Conti to build focus in the main subject. I'm using this Conti crayon to sort of color over some of the areas that I want to uh, accent or to emphasize. Sometimes I'm outlining, other times I'm shading in planes, massing in shapes. Okay, I'm still working with my Conti crayon, black, and I've kind of distributed some of that Conti through the main figure and the, the fruit, the wings, motorcycle. I'm sure there's a lot more I could do, be a lot more specific, but I'm kind of generalizing a little bit here hoping to get through this process um, and still kind of retain a bit of a drawing freshness. There's a lot of outline that has to be uh, deliberated on. I had to outline uh, this character here so I have to use sort of I guess a kind of cartooning aspect in a sense to develop the face at that scale so that it reads uh, how I like it. Same thing with, you know, the tail. I'm introducing sort of uh, uh, stylized elements into some of the representations uh, using outline maybe that's inspired by illustration or cartooning. So I'm just, I'm just got to own it, you know, it's just part of uh, developing a complicated image like this in a relatively short period of time. Um, sometimes you need to outline. Um, it's line is good, you know, we study line for a reason. If, if it's used correctly, you can you can use it to sort of uh, emphasize, of course, the you know the visual elements. So I'm using a lot of line. It's more like a dynamic, really. Not always outlining everything. Sometimes I pick up a little more. And then other times it, the line sort of trails off. I like to take some of that Conti now and bring it down through the landscape. 
try to create a little more movement and unity and maybe um, definitely more, hopefully a little more depth too. So when I develop this Conti layer, a lot of times what I want to do is start with some of the stuff that's in the middle of the page as opposed to at the edge because the Conti builds focus. So I want to have a focal point that are more uh, located in the central areas of the drawing. Conti to try to pick out cores and uh, deeper, you know, areas of depth. I'm introducing a new color of black. I want to distribute that and use that new color to help me uh, illustrate or clarify. stick here for just a little while. Just use this tool to kind of soften some of the effects. Some of the best advice I have here is you know, don't censor yourself. Try to move through the drawing process um, and just touch on the things that, that you developed in your line art. Uh, but you also have to add um, a little more of your imagination, especially when it comes to illustrating details of the anatomy and the face. Yeah, I had to think about uh, arms and legs and eyes. Um, and lips and those those kinds of things. I had to think about fur. Um, and I did that with uh, 6B and then I moved to Conti and now I, I said, you know, don't censor yourself. Sometimes the best thing to do is just try to, to roll through it. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, darker chalk here, the alpha, um, for, a, you know, even a little bit more depth like to just concentrate this onto some places where I need uh, some dynamic or where I um, have a core or uh, some, some depth that I need to push back a little bit more. So where again, where I need a little extra dark, you know, I can introduce this color. sharp edge on this charcoal. I may need to uh, put another one on there, but I'm just using it um, very intuitively. I don't want to use it all over. But I can use it where I need to sharpen something or darken something. I even use it sometimes to uh, work on the outlines of objects because it really stands out against the other charcoal if you've set up the under layers with the 6B and the Conti. I'm trying to sort of hint at things Create a sense of space and depth. Some index 
next card here. card a little bit like a ruler and a straight edge to kind of assist me. With these big chalks one thing you can do is kind of create like a flat flat shape on one edge as opposed to a point. Still get a lot of uh, precision here at the tip. So let's go ahead and try to finish this guy up a little bit more. So using this big chunk of charcoal kind of distribute a little bit of extra dark into the fur textures. Maybe even develop uh, some of the light and shadow elements, a core shadow or a cast shadow. But once I've introduced the darker color down here in the landscape, I need to bring it up through the drawing um, in a kind of intuitive way. I'm going to distribute it again into some of the same places where I put the Conti, um, the cores, the space tone, some of the underplanes, maybe even developing some of the outlines a little bit more, even with this big thick chalk. Um, sometimes at the end, you know, you really need something that's going to be dark enough. And I'm going to leave this, this last layer of chalk relatively unblended. So that it can retain, um, leave, it, leave it a little bit unblended so that it can, you know, retain some of its character. That, that's opinion, you know, that's a, each artist has to decide for themselves, you know, essentially how much line, how much blending, how much of this final heritage, alpha, um, extra dark do you use, how much Conti, these are all things that take a little bit of uh, practice, you got to navigate through that drawing. introduce just a little bit of extra color uh, to this background here. This is some Conti. We'll continue to work on the flow and the, the pattern in the sky. Before adding highlights, it may be helpful to take your eraser and lift 
um, a little bit. Uh, see how far you can get uh, that brightness to go without adding white. So I'm going to lift some of the brighter areas with my eraser before adding white. Just want to look for some kind of intriguing pattern of light and shadow. Um, a lot of it is uh, visual, just trying to balance the movement in the piece. Uh, some of it is about uh, trying to continue to heighten the realism of, of the piece. Occasionally I will still take the uh, black Conti and the white Conti together. <clears throat> I like to start the white up high on the form and let it be kind of um, a, a, a downward effect. Um, so the things up highest are going to be the brightest. Clean that up good. And let's put some highlights on this. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this drawing of the raccoon uh, flying pineapple over Mesa. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sign this. I'm, there's lots of little stuff I would just, you know, love to sit here and work on. If I had uh, more time, I, I, I maybe would. But I also enjoyed the process of this, uh, trying to get uh, something finished that is communicating um, nicely. Um, in a relatively short span of time. Uh, this is a, a carbon pencil. I'm just using it maybe to sharpen up some line work here, but mostly I want to use it to sign my drawing down here. 
um, in the lower right. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, sign that and call it, call it good for the purposes of our drawing.